Ah, the lost city of Atlantis. Fumed by waves and a serious case of global warming. True or myth? Well, that's only one way to find out. Strap in, fellow time traveler. Here it is! Atlantis at last! Lucky my time machine allowed me to breathe underwater. Wow, they've got some good looking fish down here! According to the legend, the people of Atlantis became wicked, probably consuming too much and failing to recycle. Zeus, king of the gods, ah! became angry and brought down earthquakes and floods that sank their city beneath the ocean. A natural disaster <laughs> as moral punishment for their sinful behavior. Does that remind you of anything? Well, that's right, it's us! We are all wickedly using hair dryers and driving cars and so on. And in a few short years, we will all be engulfed in our cities, just like this one. Is it true? To find out, let's go back to the time machine. Whoa! It's ancient Greece. I have landed in an awkward moment. It's the famous Battle of Thermopylae. I guess you all remember Thermopylae from the film 300. Great movie. All those beefy Spartans and Persians squash up together in a tiny, narrow pass. A tiny, narrow path between the mountain and the sea. At one end, squash tight, is the Persian army. At the other is the 300 Spartan. But why do the Spartan choose to defend the great here? Because the path was so narrow. According to the ancient writer, Herodotus is less than 50 feet. Here's the pass in the film. Oh my, that's narrow. But hold on a minute. The pass of Thermopylae is still a place you can visit in the 21st century. And this is what it looks like. No way, what happened to the path? This is more like a wide open plain. Could it be the sea level has gone down? Let's take a look. Whoa, another joke in my time machine. I'm now at the city of Ephesus. Look at those trading ships and merchants. The hustle and bustle of the great ancient port. All under the eyes of the city goddess Artemis, who wear a fetching necklace of bulls' testicles. But here's a photo of Ephesus today. No testicle wearing goddess, no water in sight. In fact, six miles from the sea. So much for the Greeks. How about the Roman? Let's take a look. Ah, the Roman city of Pisa. Not pizza. Pizza! In Italy, no sign of the leaning tower. That won't be built for another 1200 years. Look at all those merchant ships, loading and unloading. This is the most important part of the Western Italy. But hang on. Back in the 21st century, pizza too is six miles from the sea. Sea level has actually gone down. What's happening? Ah, I've gone back 5,000 years. The sea level now is 3 meters higher than 21st century. Here I go again. Oh. Whoa. Now I'm back to 102,000 BC. She looks a bit familiar. Oh, wow. Sea level now are 20 meters higher. Imagine that. Goodbye, Eiffel Tower gift shop. No more Chipotle and Starbucks at the Empire State. Want to see a willy graph? Of course you do. Here's a major study of sea level variation over the last 550 million years. High sea level at the top, low at the bottom. Three things are clear from this. One, global sea levels change a lot, like by a few hundred meters up and down. Two, sea levels change naturally all the time. They are never stable. And three, where are we? This is us right down here. As you can see, sea levels right now are close to being as low as they have been in half a billion years. Why do the sea level go up and down? Many reasons. Sea level changes from places to place because the Earth changes shape with land rising and falling. But one big reason for global sea level change is thermal expansion of the ocean. That's thermal like thermal socks. When water is warmer, it expands. Cooler, it contracts. Now, let's take a look at the temperature of the Earth for the past 550 million years. Temperature has varied a lot. But right now, we're way down there. Really, really cold. And because temperature is low, so is the sea level. Temperature now are almost as low as they have been in half a billion years. We're in an ice age right now. But sea level still rises and falls all the time, depending on natural changes of temperature. Zoom in a bit more, will you? Here's the last 2,000 years. You notice anything? From this, it looks like sea level were higher in the Middle Ages than they are now. Again, you see sea levels rising, falling all by themselves, or at least with no help from us humans. How about this bit? The latest swing upwards. It looks like it started in 1800 or maybe 1850, the latest. Why does that matter? Because there's more than a century before the carbon dioxide takes off. In other words, there's no way this rise was caused by SUV and hair dryers and jumbo jets. There weren't any back then. 
the rise in sea level that began in the early to mid 19th century is entirely natural, not man-made. But has the pace of sea level rise sped up? No! Sea levels have been rising naturally since the mid 1800s. Since then, the rate of change has not increased, and by historic standards, sea levels are changing incredibly slowly. Since the early 19th century, it has been going up at the same very slow rate. In fact, remarkably slow. The rate of sea level change 8,000 years ago was 10 times faster than today. Sea level change naturally all the time. And right now, I'm happy to say they are changing incredibly slowly. It has taken 120 years for them to rise just 20 centimeters. Think about that next time when you're at the beach watching the wave. The sea level alarm is another bit of unscientific fear mongering. What do you think of all that? Leave me a comment. Subscribe to Gorilla Science now and please donate to help buy more coal for my time machine. Every lump means an extra jump.